how you guys welcome back to my channel we are now doing mark six and of course i'm gonna do it in the chronological bible because i think y'all not speaking to me but i think you guys like when i do the chronological bible to tie everything together so that's what we're gonna do and this and i'm gonna break it up so it's gonna be chapter six um verses one through six and then the next part be like part two because it's like i could try to put chapter six all in one but i'm telling you it's just so much in the gospels that like you can't because the story may not even the next part of that chapter doesn't go because it's just like different stories jesus was just continuously doing his job okay so this one is jesus is rejected in nazareth um i be feeling like like I just did this before but I have to remember that I've also read Matthew and sometimes I'm like sitting up here like I feel like I've read this and talked to you guys about it before but that's just the whole point of the Bible anyway and Jesus is very repetitive I don't know if you told you these told you this before but that's what I love about Jesus he's very repetitive because I'm the type of person that I have to hear something over and over in order to remember it um i have great memory but once i hear over and over it like triggers something and jesus does that throughout his whole journey on this earth and i love it because it just makes me feel good about myself because you know some people get it one time and then there's some people like me who don't you have to keep saying it and it just makes me feel good like jesus understood people don't always just get it one time you say it that's it but he keeps saying it and then not only does he do it that way he does it visually for people and then he does things um for the audio people i just god is just amazing how he did things and how we're different learners and he does that for us with that being said we're going to start by reading mark since that's where we are it says jesus left the that part of the country and returned with his disciples to nazareth his hometown the next sabbath he began teaching in the synagogue and many who had heard him were amazed they asked where did you get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles then they scoffed he's just the carpenter the son of mary and brother of james joseph judas and simon his sisters live right um here among us they were deeply offended and refused to believe him wow then jesus okay then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except his hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their unbelief. Okay, that is Mark. Now, I like to do the correlation with what's different from Matthew and Luke dealing with Mark. Now, um, in Matthew, he said he he's just the carpenter's son let's see see but in mark he said he's just a carpenter the son of mary but in matthew it says he's just the carpenter's son and we know mary his mother his brothers james and all the sisters live right here me personally when they were saying all the sisters live right here i don't know why they try jesus like that because my thing is y'all live here too so what are you saying like are y'all saying i have to be above y'all to tell y'all the word you know, I think this is just a warped sense of thinking at that time because, and it might have been because of how the tradition was with the um, uh, the Pharisees and how they did things. The teachers probably looked very royal to them, and I have to research that. I will. I need to put a note to research how they looked back then because the way they treated Jesus and felt like he couldn't say nothing to them because he his sisters lived around there and then he's just a carpenter i get his job was just too dirty for him to be such a big a big uh tool for god i i, I just didn't understand that it's like because i feel like people would do like some crazy stuff like if god sent him and made him rich which he could have did that it's his son he could have did whatever he wanted to do if he would have sent him rich, then we would have had a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? It would have been some other issue. You know? And I almost got on another story, but I'm going to stay where I'm at. Because y'all don't understand. God is so much smarter than us. He's so much bigger than us. So we can think our, in our human minds everything possible. No matter how genius we are. No matter our IQ. Remember, he made your brain. So his brain is much bigger than yours. Okay? 
with that being said there's nothing that your humanly mind can think of to really explain everything that he do and why things are the way that they are i think he gives us a sense of wisdom and we must remember wisdom comes from him and i wrote that down on my sticky note right here my transparent one it said jesus did not go to school i don't remember them saying he went to school if he did i'm going to figure that out because i'm going to research and it says the wisdom he had i believe came strictly from god that's just all it is to it wisdom and proverbs tell you where it comes from it does it's not something that just falls upon you it's something that you pray for it's a gift it's a gift it's not it's not something you're just born with at times unless god touched you in the womb and he does that with some people john was touched in the womb if i'm not mistaken jeremiah was touched in his womb so it's like some things are blessed but i don't well we already know jesus was touching on too he probably just came out full of wisdom i don't know why i'm playing like this it's jesus he is God in human. <laughs> but basically, he didn't do all of the steps approved by man. So I guess they felt like he can't be the Messiah. He's just a carpenter. And I put right here because I'm, I, I guess you could say I'm Christian petty. I say silly rabbit tricks are for kids because how could y'all think just because somebody's job title makes it? Listen, let, they use Paul, a killer, a murderer. Now, the Bible, in my Bible, and I read, um, this was in the. I believe my CSB version, it said that he was a blasphemer. Now, I'm not going to get on here and say, y'all go ahead and blaspheme. It's okay. I'm never going to say that because Jesus told us that's an unforgivable sin. And I'm not going to play with it. Okay. But I'm just telling you what Paul did and how he was still able to guide people to Jesus. Gentiles, not even the people that knew Jesus, not even the people that uh, chose to kill Jesus, the Jews, but the people who didn't really know too much about them and was very much told that they wouldn't be able to be part of this because you're Gentiles. You can't be with me. We can't praise together. We can't worship together. You're a Gentile. This is against the law. But let me get back to it. Okay, so they say all these things about him. Um, now, right here, this is a little different than Matthew because in Matthew, you say, and so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief and because and then in Mark, it says, and because of their unbelief, and it goes a little deeper, he couldn't do the miracles among them except to place hands on a few sick people and heal them. But right here in Matthew, it made it seem like as it wasn't always said he did do a few miracles, but they didn't like really expound on their words, so to speak. And then I'm going to go over to Luke. It's a little bit longer. And let me tell, let me read that because that's very important. It says, Luke, when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah. They ain't like this. This would really got him. The prophet was hand, um, the scroll of Isaiah, the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the captives will be released, the blind will see, and the oppressed will be set free. And at this, at that, the time of the Lord's favor has come. Now, this is what he's reading, y'all. He rolled it up or whatever like that. Our eyes and so go looking intently at him. Then he began to speak the, the scripture you have just wrote, read. And I can't see that. I ain't going to move today because it's going to get messed up. It's filled this very day. Ooh, I think that struck a nerve. It's like they was amazed at first. Like, oh. Then they thought about that thing. I know he lied. And he said, everyone spoke well of him. It was amazing, gracious words that came from his lips. And they was like, how can this be, they asked. Isn't this Joseph's son? They tried Joseph. Then he said, you will undoubtedly quote me this proverb. Physician heals yourself. Meaning do miracles here in your hometown like those you did in Capernaum. But I tell you the truth, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown certainly there were many needy widows in israel in elijah's time i like this part when the heavens were closed for three and a half years and a severe famine devastated the land yet elijah was not sent to any of them he was instead sent to a foreigner a widow of zarephath in the land of Sidon. and there were many lepers in israel in the time of the prophet elisha elisha but the only one hill was Naaman a Syrian when they heard this the people in the synagogue were furious 
jumping up, they mobbed him. I had to do that because y'all know mob is a big word. Mobbed him and forced him to the edge of the hill, which the town was built, and they intended to push him over. Can y'all believe they did that to Jesus? I'm just very much shook. I can't believe they stood up on him like that. And I'm kind of upset with Matthew and Mark they failed to tell us they rode up on Jesus like that. It's just like, I'm going to tell y'all. And then I'm, let me look around. Because see, in Luke, um, this part, which is parallel, it does not say how he healed a few people. And they just had a lack of faith or belief. So he didn't heal a lot. Isn't that crazy? Mark, Matthew and Mark tell you we, what happened. and Well, no. Matthew and Mark just let you know that the people was tripping. And he wasn't able to do the job that he wanted to do for them because they weren't believers. And then Luke goes in to give you more detail and say, this is right after he read the scroll the, of the prophet Isaiah. And let them know that at this time, that part of what he prophesied about is happening right now. And it's me. And it's just like, uh, hold up. We was with you until you said that you the Messiah. Um, you just kind of tried me. Um... And then they go in to say how he, he tried to explain to them, like, y'all got to be careful. Just because you know me, you know my family, does not mean God is not here. That makes no sense, y'all. Y'all see what happened to Elijah and Elisha in their hometowns. Y'all rejected them as well. And see, they had to go somewhere else and heal the people. When y'all had trouble in your place and God placed somebody there to help you in that time of trouble. But you guys were disobedient and you were unbelievers. So they had to go somewhere else and do what they had to do. And heal somebody outside of your home because you just y'all nasty. Not only is y'all nasty, y'all gonna jump up on me, try to push me off the cliff. You thought I'm pretty sure them angels was just a fluttering around them. Jesus probably held up real good. I couldn't believe it. But that is Mark chapter six, one through six, and then the correlating um Gospels is Matthew 13, 53 through 58. Luke chapter 4, 16 through 30. I hope that you guys learned something from today. I enjoy going over this with you guys. Please like, subscribe, and comment, please. I like to talk to people. I really do like to talk back. I'm more of a texter. <laughs> but I will talk back. I'm getting to the point that I need to speak back. Because I have to talk to you guys here and... And I have some other endeavors that I'm talking in front of people and those things. But like I say, you guys, I love doing this. And I thank you for the new subscribers. It's a blessing. And I hope that you you feel God and you see God through me, you know, and hear him through my voice. And not me, Christina, because I'm a trip <laughs> all on my own. But I need God all the time, every time. And I need him to do what he has to do with me. So... Y'all just, you know, hit your girl up. I'm a cool person. I'm not mean. Unless you're mean to me. But even then, I'm not very mean. I just kind of distance myself. Y'all have a blessed morning. Pray for your home and your family. Drink more water. Be more cognizant of what you put in your mouth. Not for weight-wise, but just because this world doesn't care about us. And they're trying to take us out. Be careful what you eat. Be careful with the fast foods, y'all. I have my favorite foods, too, okay? Just be careful. I love you guys. Bye.